I'd like to just uh, quickly just share with you uh, what we have done and interacted with uh, a uh, energy development uh, corporation back in the Philippines. So, uh, into the topic of uh, material selection, and uh, for Marupeni Itochu, uh, we are a trade house and we represent a Japanese steel mill back in Japan called JFE. So, we have lots of interaction with that. And through that, um, being in the trade house, we communicate with uh, the end users um, in terms of OCTG and flow line tubeless. So today the topic is material selection. What is material selection? Someone um, actually asked this question to one of our colleagues in the technical side. And I give a philosophy that uh, the technical side, in terms of consultation, is just like a doctor. and then. In terms of the meal, they dispense the drugs according to the problem it comes. Very interesting approach, and let's find out more. So here's the agenda. Uh, we have some background just to find out what's the corrosion issues that have been discovered in the low pH wells. Yeah. And we go right into the OCTG, right in the downhole, and followed by our evaluation in terms of our flow line and uh, what are the lesson learned that we have found. So here into the background, just a schematic about the uh, geothermal power generation in a simplified uh, model for basic understanding. Uh, material selection, we have found challenges due to lack of international uh, standards of qualification uh, in terms of line pipe and casing materials. There isn't a focus for geothermal application itself. By and large, it is all depend on uh, oil and gas, which has uh, far more experience in terms of uh, explorations and, and production. And uh, we leverage it on that. For geothermal wise, the application is uh, exposed to high temperature, 200 and above. Some even go into 350 or even 500 in some locations. Yeah. And we have uh, understand that the pH is also low, as low as uh, 3 or below. And due to the phase change for geothermal fluids, uh, the partial pressure is uh, considered as unreliable. So we have turned into other methods of uh, consideration during the uh, methodology. Here's a uh, well data that we have uh, gathered. In terms of U A and B, so as you can see, U A, the pH is uh, two point seven to four point five, so it's below four point five, and U B is between two point zero to two point seven, and we have uh, the sulfate level at this level. So here, what happens during the uh, low pH well concerns on um, in the well bore? We have identified uh, metal junks recovered during the work over. So it's due to the thinning and peeling of uh, spotted lines. And on the surface, which is on the left hand side, uh, we found holes in the production T and also the leak in the top bump. So in consideration of using just carbon steel, which is a basic approach, uh, usually we understand that uh, geothermal wells uh, do not get into acidic level um, when you drill at once. It slowly and gradually proceed into lower pH. So carbon steel is usually been, been used in the first place, and they have discovered that the Perforated liners and production casing has been severely damaged due to the low pH, high temperature, uh, and also the CO2 and H2S content. So we will need to further evaluate in the material selection. So we have come into this extensive um, chart. It's an initial study that we understand. It breaks down into three categories with level 3 in the uh, uh, modern city stainless steel and level 2 we have a uh, duplex and super duplex which you could understand as 22 or 25 chrome commercially and we have uh, level 1 and 
A, B, so B in terms of titanium material, and level one as the Anconel 625 uh, oxalate, uh, high nickel with molybdenum content. So with this study, we still find that um, it's too conservative, and there are some uh, proprietary grades which um, is not considered. So in between level two and three is what we try to identify what's the potential candidates in this study. Here's our approach in the fourth step, um, material selection process. So definitely a lot of uh, interaction with the end user, trying to gather and understand uh, their well conditions uh, in terms of uh, their parameters, whether it's a uh, downhole or a uh, surface flow line. And after gathering the information, we go into the methodology of using the software simulation. We use the OLI, uh, which is uh, very popular in terms of uh, this uh, basis. Oil and gas has been always using OLI, and uh, its methodology of uh, getting the fugacity um, profile is uh, realistic. So we want, in this software simulation, we try to profile and understand the behavior of the well in several different segments. It could be of a uh, four point and uh, various temperature, uh, pressure, and also the pH level. And next, we go into the evaluation of the corrosion risk in three aspects, general corrosion, the SSC, and the SCC. So last but not least, we enter into our material selection itself and based on the uh, international standards where ISO 15156 and also the uh, European standard for corrosion as reference, not for getting NACE. Uh, we also have uh, technical papers which we gathered um, as reference from conferences like this, uh, even World Geothermal Congress. A SPE, uh, AMPP as well. So these are references. And because of our relationship with the steel mill, there is internal data which is not openly shared, but we could gather to understand and put it in our assessment and consideration. Follow on, we go into the pit for purpose test and also a few tests as well. So let's take a look at how this process works. And first, we look at the international standards. As you can see, four listed there, three are according to the oil and gas background, and only one is um, developed by our um, friends in New Zealand, Kiwi friends. Um, they have came up with the geothermal uh, standards, which we have applied. So we call to gather expertise in this platform, uh, in this conference also. Uh, to come out with a collaboration to strengthen and develop something more focused for this application as well. So into the evaluation of OCTG, so we picked up the well data. As you can see, the temperature is 300 degrees C, and the flow well temperature is 200. And during the shut-in, um, as it cool down from uh, 200, doing flow, and slowly it comes into ambient temperature. So these are the, the given parameters from uh, the end user. And we have uh, also gathered the brine and also gas chemistry. So in terms of the water chemistry, the pH uh, at measured at 25 degrees is 3.6. And we have uh, gas chemistry where we have much concern on the CO2 and H2S being the critical data. Next, we have actually picked up the, the worst case scenario um, to base on as the parameters for this well condition. So in terms of temperature, H2S, concentration of uh, chloride and the pH level, so these are the four main um, parameters that we put up to take reference on the ISO 15156 and NACE, which is uh, the material selection guidance as an international standard. So as you can see from this uh, table, 
with regards to the worst case scenario that we have uh, put up. 25 chrome is the one that is uh, suitable in this case. And we would like to further study more as we go into the uh, fit or purpose test and also the view test to understand whether this still stands right. So into the fit for purpose, we have uh, put up the worst case scenario, consider the corrosion risk of SSC with the temperature, ambient temperature being set there. So it works in a autoclave test for 30 days according to NACE standard and ISO. And we have the field test in this, this case. We put it as an immerse into the production line for 30 days as well. So one of the potential material uh, candidate is fit into the production line for 30 days and we retrieve it um, after 30 days and analyze it to see how, how the material responds to the environment. And here's the reference note on uh, the uh, field condition, the top field A. So we put up the test result and discussion. So for the test lab, we have gathered the results that two potential uh, candidates of the material, which is uh, indicated as a uh, yeah, UNS number. So UNS number S42825 and 32750 has been put up into the uh, autoclave test. There isn't any SSC um, cracking that has been observed, so it's good. The only thing is uh, probably just a scratch after analysis, and we have a stamina that is not uh, cracking, it is uh, considered as a scratch. So after gathering the result, we put up as a corrosion uh, rate. With this, the 13 chrome uh, corrosion rate is much bigger, representing with a bigger circle, and the other two potential um, material grades are much smaller, so they are more, more suitable to, to be considered. And in the field test, as a basis to support the um, lab test gathering, we have the 30 days. On the baseline, it shows materials that has not been put into the production line. And then on the right-hand side, or left-hand side towards you, uh, is as retrieved. So once coupons have been retrieved, we put up into analysis. <coughs> we found there's no erosions due to the uh, flow turbulence. Some the conclusion that we have made, according to ISO 15156, material uh, selection will be 25 chrome. And then with uh, material cost in mind, that's what we always go for optimization. Uh, the UNS 42825 has been considered. And we need a uh, for purpose test to justify <coughs> this recommendation. So that's the part on OCTG. Now we go into the flow line assessment as well. So in terms of case study for, for flow line, the inlet temperature on the separator is between 190 to 230 degrees C. And then when it comes to shut-in, it's between 24 degrees ambient temperature to 230. So we have also, just for our study's sake, uh, maintained the pressure at uh, 3 megapass. In terms of uh, the gas and brine chem chemistry collected, the CO2 that we are uh, into, the CO2 and H2S that we are more, more into um, it, as we understand that CO2 dissolves in water and it uh, brings down the pH level. Uh, it's a, a chemical electrolysis um, of how the fundamentals of a general corrosion uh, would be. And also the H2S, in terms of the catalyst of hydrogen atoms, 
been diffused into the metal, causing the metal to be uh, brittle, and this causes the SSC. So after gathering the data, we also did uh, the corrosion rate evaluation in terms of how the piping layout and arrangement will be. So as you can see, uh, in terms of horizontal, vertical, 45 degrees in time, these are the orientation that we have uh, observed within our studies. And we're using the software simulation to understand the corrosion rate in the areas of concern and it's way beyond uh, 10 mm per year. So in terms of high turbulence at the elbow and the teeth, the corrosion rate could go as high as 40 mm per year. So just some indication for 45 degrees uh, incline, expected worst case, wall thickness loss is 15 mm, and then we have the horizontal at 15, uh, 16 mm, and we have the vertical one at 13 mm. So in this case, carbon steel is not suitable. And we tabulate it uh, using the ISO 15156 to give you the evaluation. So table 10 right below shows the worst case scenario that we have gathered for this parameter. And in the green section, which, is, uh, which are the materials that is uh, good to go, there are solid 25 chrome, 825 clad, and also 625 clad as the recommendation according to the uh, ISO 6. Uh, we will take it to another step to make a challenge and that's why I'm to decide the optimal option. The conclusion that we have come up to, as we understand corrosion risk is not the only factor that comes into final material selection. We are also taking into cost consideration the availability of the material itself in terms of lead time and also some of the technical issues um, during implementation that has to put in as a holistic consideration. So, if time constraints, as we have mentioned, you could go into the conventional um, selection where the 25 probe would be uh, within the range for good to go. If not, there's a challenge that we would like to propose or fit for purpose test and using the solid 13 probe and also the 22 chrome uh, in terms of this flow line design. So some of the lessons learned that we gathered here for the corrosion rate for carbon steel under aggressive uh, conditions due to the low um, pH width, which is extremely high, and also the need to consider corrosion resistant alloys against uh, this corrosion risk assessment. We also recommend the fit for purpose test, especially in this uh, geothermal application, in terms of uh, lab test and also field test. And we have uh, also put up with another fit for purpose test, which is the flow loop test, to consider erosion and also the corrosion aspects. Our next step in Proposing on this uh, material uh, recommendation or the process, uh, we see that the industry has been a lack of this wide gap of uh, understanding, especially uh, with the brought up of uh, being oil and gas focus and into geothermal. So the need to pull up all the expertise to come up with uh, the material optimization roadmap for material selection in terms of corrosivity assessment and also come up with a tailor made that proposed with a comment <coughs> come up on the tailor guidelines for comparison in terms of geothermal application and with the platform of uh, using the AMPP which is the Association of uh, Material Performance and Protection it came out in the history where NACE and the uh, material 
protection and performance have merged. Um, we are willing to uh, work up with a to form a working group that focus to work on this uh, material selection chart for the in industrial wide use. So if the approach will be going into as a recommendation practice and then over time with experience and know-how to refine it into an industry standard. So some of the services that uh, our company actually uh, provide, we give you a second opinion. Um, being the end user, they usually have their, their own ways in uh, material selection, um, whether it's in-house or outsource. But we give you a second opinion out of it. And also put up the fit for purpose test parameter as what you, you have seen um, in the journey here. That we identify the worst case scenario. Uh, we are also able to manage the supply of uh, tubulars, uh, the steel tubulars for OCTG and flow lines. And we put up uh, technical uh, sessions with the end user for direct in interaction to understand what are the challenges they have uh, been going through and help them to solve the root cause. So in terms of various applications, whether it's oil and gas, carbon capture, water injection, or geothermal applications as well. So the philosophy that we have is safety, quality, and also cost and concern. I'd like to thank the uh, committee that actually put up in this uh, forum in Taiwan. And it's been a great pleasure to be here uh, sharing this with you. And also our, our partner um, that joined in this study, that we, they have shared the uh, well data with us, uh, EDC in Philippines. And also the management in um, MITA that allow me to present uh, this presentation to you. Thank you.